the main thing I wanted to do, um, make sure my other camera's running, and it is. I finally, after 24 versions, got my Z axis carriage, ZX, whatever you want to call it. The lead screws and holds the 2020 extrusion to go across the X. I finally got that after 24 versions where it should be operational. Um, actually, let me get let me get a piece of round. Piece of round extrusion here. It should work fine because it worked fine on the last three or four different versions, so um, it's kind of a mess and I gotta get some uh, M3 screws that are shorter so that I can get this motor mounted in here better but I used some longer screws and put them in there just to make sure my locations and everything was good I can get a hold of all this stuff without losing it Okay, so there we go. There is my X-axis 2020 extrusion, my stepper motor. It's going to be tight. It's going to be close here. Lead screws. And let's see here. There we go. That already had worked out several versions ago, so I knew I I knew I had that one whipped. Play games bad cheered five points. Thank you. Thank you for the bits. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining. Hey, there's 3D print llama. I gotta, I gotta keep up with uh, chat. And there's Hawk. Hey, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. It is you should check yourself before you wreck yourself. Oh, okay. Anyway, we have uh, finally gotten a success, and I got some bugs worked out of my printer. I was having some problems with the printer, and D helped me out with that, and we got all the bugs worked out of it. I finally got on to Cura 3.6 and I actually got it to where the uh, support material would break away. So, a lot of steps forward this week, well, in the past few days. But this is the big one, this is the big one. I've been working real close with D and we've been debugging different issues and... Uh, couple versions back I had this one was it the, yeah this one and it printed but I don't know for the life of me I let it run through the night and no maybe I didn't let this one run through the night but anyway it printed and D, D hit me up and he said hey what's that little mark in the side of your print and I thought it was just you know a little inclusion or whatever just a bobble but then when it all got done and I popped it off the bed it was just no layer adhesion right there I don't know what happened but there was nothing there it just came right apart which was okay because what I did do hey hey thank you very much Hawk for the singles 25 that's awesome. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. That that helps out a lot. Every bit helps. Uh, everything on the channel has been going pretty well. Um, I got an upgrade. I picked up a C920 at Goodwill. Guess how much? 
Yes, how much? Matter of fact, all of my webcams have come from Goodwill. I replaced this one here. This says iWorld. I got took it out of the mix. So now I got an HP 3100, which is a 720p. I've got a C270, which is a 720p, and then I got a C920, 299. And I think the other two I paid a dollar ninety nine for. So, hey, we're moving up. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because now you can see me better. And like I said, I don't know, this weather's got my face broke out bad. Nightbot doesn't like something I typed in. I'll have to fix that. Um, but thank you guys for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. Like I said, this is not going to be a long stream. We're just going to hang out a little bit. Thought I'd show you the progress. Um, kind of give you a, a rundown of what I have went through trying to get this thing to work. Anyway, that was... We were getting pretty close. i got to get the cameras in a different place now. So We were getting pretty close with this version here. And layer adhesion sucked. So I ended up tearing my printer down. I cleaned some nozzles, put a used nozzle in it after I cleaned it. And it started leaking around the nozzle. I didn't have it tight enough. I did not heat the nozzle before I tightened it. So I had a big old glob of plastic I had to get off of there. So while I was into it, I went ahead and peeled all the plastic chunks off of it and peeled the Capcom, 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 whatever it is, the tape off of the heater block. Um, I had previously bought some silicone socks for it, so changed the tip, heated it up, tightened it up, put a sock on it. She's been printing like a champ ever since, so that's good news. After this one, I knew I had to make some modifications because my belt was hitting my rollers. It lined up in, in Fusion 360, everything that I could see lined up perfect. But then when I put the wheels on, it was hitting the wheels. So I made some adjustments. I raised the motor up. I think I raised the motor up another five millimeters and I scooted the uh, belt slots out five millimeters so that they would clear the wheels and everything was looking good I printed on this yesterday um, I think 11 or 12 hours I printed on this sucker and I went to bed it had like two hours to go and I went to bed everything was running great but slow I had the speed turned way down and uh, sure enough I got up I got up and uh, this was laying on the floor and a bird had set up a nest in my printer big old green plastic nest right there so I was a little bit frustrated so I cleaned up the mess I started over and I reprinted it and it finished well I was gone today I had to leave at noon go take care of some business at the store and when I come back it was done so I'll put it all together and everything looks good I still the only thing I have left to do is I got this is just a sample piece of 2020 um, I made it so that you can run a bolt I've, let me see here you can see here I've got I've got a bolt here and a bolt on the back side with t-nuts inside there but then also in the end I don't know if you can see there's a hole back there so I can run an allen bolt right into the extrusion my wife just brought me a tap home I asked her to pick one up on the way home five millimeter tap so I can tap the extrusion so that thing should be solid as a rock I don't think it's gonna go anywhere with the two t-nuts and a allen bolt through the end on both ends it should be good my roller bearings, they work, man, they're like glass. Oh my god, I, I can't believe how good they roll. So, 
I was I was almost to the point when I put those 608 bearings on and tried to run them in that round extrusion I was almost to the point of giving up I wanted to make that round extrusion work because I had it and just because it was a challenge and uh, I was just about to give up but won't the belt rub the mount no it won't rub the mount um, once I get the once I get the other one on it's it, it rubs the mount now because I'm just using it I'm holding it against the extrusion just so I can hold it in place but in reality when when I have it lined up it'll be pretty much center of those slots that I cut in it once I get the other side so one side I'll have the motor and the two idlers the other side is just going to have two idlers so it's going to come through the slot over the two idlers and right back now I am I'm printing this exact same one I just won't put a motor in it that way if I ever need a spare they're interchangeable I don't have I don't have a left and right I don't have uh, a drive end and a driven end I don't have an idler end whatever you want to call it I can make one end work for either side or one bracket work on either end so but it should clear should clear those slots good it it was definitely a process and I have I have learned quite a bit uh, in this process with fusion and uh, uh oh what do we got hey crystal thank you for the bits I appreciate it you guys you I really appreciate all your support thank you very much <clears throat> you help you help support the hobby just showing up and coming to the channel is plenty of support I appreciate just that alone but thank you very much for the bits everyone helps um, what was I saying F oh fusion I've learned a bunch of stuff in fusion I still got a lot to learn I still got and I talked to Tom there about some of the things in the timeline when they turn yellow and get disassociated and it this had three items in the timeline that were yellow and showed warnings but it printed fine I I couldn't figure out how to fix them and it looked good in the model and it printed okay so I went ahead with that still have a couple issues that I gotta learn in fusion where I go back and try to delete something um, well like the motor mount holes let me show you on one I'll show you on a different one Um, this one here will work. No, it won't. There's no motor mount holes on that one. It broke before it got there. So I'll show you on this one. Um, these motor mount holes. All four of them. I tried and tried and tried and tried to move them up five millimeters. I wanted to keep them all in the same location and just move them all up. But for some reason, I would select them and one or two would move and two wouldn't or they would move and leave a hole as an extra hole where they were so I must have had duplicates I must have cut those holes more than once in the same place or something I don't know but so I got to develop my habits and and be a little more efficient but I truly believe this whole process I've gone a long way my round extrusion I can do those I can do those with my eyes closed now I've done them so many times and I'm almost there with this I've gotten to the point when it gets very bad at all I just I call it quits and I quit trying to fix it and I just delete it and start over um, but now this last this last version I got in the habit of 
I would edit one thing, I would save it with a new version number as long as I had no errors in the timeline. And I would just keep working on it one little piece at a time, save it, new version number, as long as there was no errors. As soon as I got an error, I would just close it, open it back up with the last version I had, and try to go on. That helped me out quite a bit because I was going way too far down the road before I would save it and then I would get past a point of no return and I couldn't fix it. So then I'd really truly have to start all over from the beginning which was a pain. But, but we got there. The only thing that did not work out with this mount, which isn't a big deal, is to get everything to line up the way I needed it to line up and work around that round extrusion. Um, I did not have enough. I did not have enough room for all four of the screw holes for my lead screw nuts. But I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna either grind or cut a flat on one side of it. I, I'm sure three screws will hold that T nut fine. I think there's. Some of the printers out there only have two. Um, I don't think it'll be a problem. My T-nuts, I don't know where they went, but they fit in there perfect. Um, they just slide in. Uh, um, if I was to put it on the bottom, put the flange on the bottom, let me turn it around this way so you can see it, but if I was to put the flange on the bottom and slide it up through, technically, it fits so well I would not even have to put a bolt in it because gravity would keep it down on the flange but I'm going to I'm gonna put screws in it but if it, it turned out beautiful it prints beautiful and it holds on there nice so I'm excited I'm exhausted I have been fighting this and D knows uh, D's been fighting with me through the whole thing trying to get all the bugs worked out of this thing I sent the file over to him when I was having all the trouble with my printer and he printed it out so I got to at least see that it was it was going to work out and we were on the right path and then I had to make a couple of little last minute adjustments and she took right off so and this is this is the key component because there's so many other pieces to that big printer that uh, I can't do because the measurements are going to depend on how this comes out. My carriage, I can't do anything with that till I get this made. Um, my extrusion, till I get the extrusion for my x-axis and know exactly what that length is, I can't make my, um, I can't cut the extrusion for the bottom because I need to make sure everything's straight and square and locked down. So. This, this was the key part, and we finally got it. Cannot wait to get this thing motivated. Now, I think that print, what did I start that, about two, five, so it's probably got about three hours to go, three or four, and then I should have the second one, and then I gotta go find some screws. I don't want to order them, I don't want to wait on them, but I don't want to go to Ace and pay 50 cents a piece for them either. So, I don't know, I gotta figure something out. I may just take some of these long three millimeter screws and cut them so that I can use them for the motor, but I think that's all I need. Man, I got such a mess on this desk. I need to, uh, I need to do a little more cleanup on that center hole. On that center hole where the, uh, on the motor there's a little step up. It's like 22 millimeter step up. And I've got that to fit into the big hole. I need to do some cleanup from where I've got some stringing in the way. It's not sitting in there yet, but my screws are, I think I wrote it down. Let's see if I got it right here. I think I do. M3 by 10s. 
That's what I need, and all I've got is M3x20s. So, I go get those, tap my extrusion, and put this other end on it, and I can put it together. Then I can start the next step, which will be the carriage to support my extruder. And I've got uh, I've got um, what is it called? I'm putting a direct drive extruder on it, a Titan clone, and a pancake motor. Um, I've got all that assembled, V6 hot end. And I, I had it already assembled when I had the, the printer out in the garage. I, I already had all that put together, but I tore it back apart. Uh, Dee's been having such good luck with uh, his volcanoes. And I watched his work, and man, he's just he's printing fast, and they're looking great. So I, I had the kit that I bought came with um, the volcano option or three of the regular heater blocks so I took those off and put the volcano block on and changed everything over so I'm gonna run it that way so that'll be the next thing that I do in the videos I'm gonna start uh, once I get this carriage on here I'm gonna start designing the or uh, yeah I'll start designing the extruder carriage and uh, I've got the bed. I've got the 400 by 400, 110 volt bed. I got to get all the framework and stuff set up for that. And I've got, I got an order from Zyltec. Got a good discount with D through Zyltec, and got uh, 10 pack of those 2020 extrusions, and got everything piled in the corner there, ready to move on. Just been held up by these. These stupid fittings are uh, carriages, so I'm excited. You can see there where it's printing off to the side. I was doing an experiment to see. I took my took my uh, support material and spread it way out. I like doubled the spacing. I wanted to see if it would print now that it had been fixed, and it actually it print pretty darn good for having the support material that far apart uh, Minnesota maker did not get it yet oh okay did you get your item I see <clears throat> so that's kinda where things are right now Hopefully, hopefully uh, later in the week I can get started on that carriage and I'll do a little more streaming on it. I'm in the process. Um, we sell antiques in an antique mall the next town up the road. And they're closing their doors. So everything's been kind of chaotic. I had to go today and make arrangements for uh, moving to a different antique mall there in the same town. So for the next week, I'm probably going to be scarce because I got to move everything from the upstairs of one mall down the road and upstairs into the next mall. So I'm going to be busy and tired. But I'm going to try, still try to get at least one more stream in this week. Uh, let's see any other news I told you about the camera from Goodwill that worked out awesome everything's coming together just practice practice I need to keep working on Fusion 360 so I can make less mistakes and be more efficient with my time with it but Hopefully this thing will print good. I bought two more rolls of that same green filament and I've almost gone through one of them. 
just in rebuilds of the carriage. I did find out that a lot of it was my own fault. I was making them way too thick. I was putting thinking I was thinking I was making it stronger by going 80 90 percent infill and uh, actually the I think the one that ended up printing was only 10 percent infill and that was it's strong it's I was wasting a lot of plot plastic but that's just due to lack of experience I've, I've only been doing this seven months so I feel like I've come a long way pretty quick yeah, D, 73 degrees down there, we know. Rub it in. One of these days I might surprise you. I might be knocking on your door. <laughs> I guess some other things that I got going on or are, are coming up, not going on yet, but getting ready to come up, would be I bought, I bought the 10-pack of Extrusion, um, 10 sticks, 20, 20, one meter long. And I'm not going to need near that much for my printer, but I'm going to make a laser cutter like D has. So that's why I bought all the extrusion. That'll be also coming up soon. I'm going to do that simultaneously. Um, while I'm working on the carriage and, and progressing with this 3D printer, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the framework for the laser and my granddaughter for her birthday grandma told her that uh, if she had interest and wanted to we would buy the parts and she's going to come over I think she's going to come over every other weekend and uh, as far as I know, one day every other weekend, and we are going to build her a printer from scratch. She took 3D printing class in school, and uh, I, I don't know what they've used. She's supposed to come over this weekend, so I'll get to touch base with her and see what they used. But she designed some models in school, and the teacher didn't know how to run the printer, wasn't able to get their models printed out so here she had the files and she got her grade and that class is long gone but she never did get to have her files printed out so I told her to bring those over and we'd print them but I got to see what she learned on school learned on to design in school and uh, I'll probably get her I told her to bring her laptop and we'll get her set up with the slicers and the fusion and all that stuff and get a good starting place I told her be prepared she's gonna be on some streams she's okay she's okay with it she's not shy so that ought to be fun I'm looking forward to that so the next thing uh, hey Brian hey buddy Thank you very much for the bits. I appreciate it, man. How you liking it down in Florida? You should be back up here. You'll be up here where uh, where all the cold weather is, buddy. Or I should come down to Florida. <laughs> uh oh, what happened? I think I've got something set to automatic on the camera or something. My lighting is changed. I do. I do. I have that automatic white balance on. So. But anyway, those are those are several projects that are coming up. So I'm going to have plenty of content coming. I'm. A, I just seem to be at a bottleneck right now where I've been fighting this. Um, carriage that might need to turn the AC on by the end of the week yeah that's all right I told you it swings back our way in the summertime you'll be down there in all that heat and humidity and it'll kind of even out I think
a little bit. Although I'd still much rather put up with the heat and humidity and be down there near the ocean. It's funny that Robbie Mack sent D a uh, Hoosier Club pin, and he's in South Carolina. I'm in Indiana. I'm a Hoosier. And most of my shirts are Myrtle Beach shirts. So we need to trade places. You come up here and hang out with Robbie, and I'll go down there and hang out at the beach. Sound like a deal? Oh no, 12 degrees and snowing. Well, you keep that snow up there. It's. I don't know what the temperature is, but it's raining here. Uh, 54 degrees. It's 54 degrees and raining here, which is better than snow. The news said the other night that uh, we had a 100 degree swing. We went, like in two days, we went from negative 38 wind chill to positive 62 in a couple days. That's just unreal. All that's going to do is keep everybody sick. It could stay 62 for me. I'm okay with the 50s, actually. It's, I throw a sweatshirt on and we're good to go. Well, I'll tell you what. We're coming up on 50 minutes. I know that's short, but... I'm tired and it's been a long day. And... Uh, I've kind of run out of things to do till that last piece gets printed so I think I'm on call her here and I'm going to thank everybody again that was awesome I just really it blew my mind let me got four people on the uh, on the leaderboard up there thank you all I appreciate it and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to join me I know it's last minute. I'm trying to get a little more stable on my schedule. And uh, I'm not sure. I haven't figured out the second day yet. But I'm going to always try Mondays at 4.30. So you can kind of roughly count on that. Um, that's that's my primary one. But So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and close out here. And... Again, thank you for coming and spending your time with me. And uh, we will be doing another video here real soon. And I hope you come back and join me again. I appreciate every one of you. So all of you be safe. Go out there, Minnesota Maker. Careful in the snow, man. But keep the snow up there. And uh, I'll probably see some of you in the mornings with Mike and... Maybe Ricky. I don't know if Ricky's streaming tomorrow or not. I never did here, but um, I will catch up with you all later. Thanks for coming. See ya.